Hello guys, welcome back again to my channel. In today's session, we are going to discuss about correlation coefficient. We are going to understand this with help of some dice. So as you can see in the screen, we have some dice over here and we are going to roll these dice one by one and try to find out how the output looks like. In the left side, we have one table written over there. So dice one have some outcome, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let me change this. If you see, I, if I'm changing two to six, the dice one graph is changing with respect to the numbers I'm changing in the table. So if I say that I randomly triggered the die one and I got some outcome. So these are the outcome. Let's change the number to a series like one, two, three, as a straight line. So let me pull this down to six. And again, we have the, let's say that this die has some high number. So I'm going to increase the series. We know that 16 cannot come in the dice outcome, but for now I'm just showing it as I, I just wanted to put a straight line. So you can see that in dice one, we have a straight line over here in the first plot. And in the dice two, we have, I also want to put the same straight line over here. Let's put this. So now the second plot also is a straight line and first part is also a straight line. And in the third one, I'm plotting both the plot at once and these plots are overlapping now. So my correlation coefficient or the Pearson correlation coefficient is one over here. So it means when I have the same type of trend or same type of outcome, my Pearson correlation coefficient becomes or remains one. But if I change the series, let's make it opposite like 16 to one. So let, I'm changing the series. You can see that the ties to plot is changing like 16, 15, 14. Let's change this. Now, my first outcome in the first die is 1. In the second die is 16. So these are just uh, opposing series. And in this, in this third plot, you can see that we have like two, it's a cross type of plot I'm getting. Now, if I see my correlation coefficient over here, it is minus 1. So what type of feeling is giving me? It's giving me that if this series or a number or the output or a random variable, the same type of trend, my correlation coefficient becomes one and this correlation coefficient varies between one and minus one. So I'm going to put again some random numbers to show you that this number can never go bit from minus one to one. So then between, so the die cannot go from one to six. We can only get the numbers from one to six. So let's change this dice one outcome. So now I have generated some random numbers on dice one outcome. So you can see that the correlation coefficient is minus 0.03. So this having kind of negative trend, but I cannot see, I cannot see with help of visualization and I cannot determine if there is some negative correlation exists or not. But this correlation coefficient have some power by which it is able to check out if those series had opposite trend or they have same trend towards the time. So how this is possible, how it is calculating these correlation coefficient. So we are going to get into the formula now. So here is the formula for Pearson correlation coefficient. So we have the Pearson correlation coefficient which is given by R that is n multiplied by sigma into xy multiplied minus sigma sigma y upon n into sigma square minus sigma square upon multiplied by n y sigma y square minus y square. Okay, so this formula doesn't give me any feeling. So let's put the same number series over here and try to apply this formula on top of this. So here I have created one more table. So in this table, I have X and Y. These are the same outcome what we had earlier over here. But now for calculating this formula values, I'm also calculating the nominator and the denominator part values. So the nominator we have N into Sigma X, Y minus sigma into x, y. So I need to find out what is the value of x into y. So that I am going to calculate over here. So what I'm doing that I'm just multiplying one and five, that is five, two and four, that is eight, three and seven, that is 21. So I'm just finding out the values of multiplication of x and y. Now I'm just squaring this dice one outcomes over here. And then I'm squaring up dice two outcomes over here. So once I am I am able to do it now 
I just have to calculate the sum of all these series because the upper part of the formula it says that sigma of x y so means I have to find out the sum of this complete numbers from 5 to 15 so this is my number which is coming on the nominator part over here now I need to find out sigma x and sigma y so just I need to calculate these sigma so this is the sum of this one multiplied by sum of this one so that n we have total number of samples or total number of data points now this value sigma x y is 269 you can see from here to here and sigma x is 62 sigma y is 75 and we have sigma x square that is 298 then we have sigma y square that is 403 so we are able to calculate all these values now let's see how the formula is able to find out the trend so if I change the dice 1 to the same type of series what we did earlier like 1, 2, 3 and till 16. Okay, now I have changed the series to the same type of trend. Again I am dice 2, I am changing the same. So right now I have changed everything. So my correlation coefficient is 1. Then how it is coming 1? Let's see what is happening inside the formula. So what is actually happening over here is that the xy n into xy part is getting increased by a higher amount when I have same type of series and that is happening because I am multiplying smaller digit with the smaller one and the bigger digit with the bigger one. So here I am applying 16 multiplied by 16 and here I have 1 multiplied by 1. So in that way whatever number I am getting this xy sigma of xy is i'm getting over here that is pretty high if you can see over here okay let me autofill i need to remove this uh, yes so if you can see over here that is 1496 whatever sigma xy i'm getting but once i will change the series from 16 just me change let, let me change the series from 16 to 1 16 15 to one so as i've changed the series you can see that i am right now i'm getting 816 only so this number this is why this is happening because the sigma into xy is 16 multiplied by 1 right now and here also i'm 16 multiplied by 16 multiplied by 1 that is the nominator part that is sigma into xy the number is reducing by tremendous amount let me change it again to the same series so let me write down what what actually I got here. So I got 816 as a sigma into xy. 816 that is previous outcome. 816. This is the value of sigma xy. Why I have complete diverging series like first is 1 to 16 and other they, they have like completely a different trend now and correlation coefficient is also minus one now if i do it again back to 1 to 16 the number over here is 1496 so you can automatically see here that there's a diff very high difference when we have when we have a same type of series or same type of trend in the series and one when we do not have the same type of trend in the series the same is happening over here so what is this nominator part doing here here is that while we have same type of trend in the series the higher number will get multiplied with the higher number of different series so the total sigma of xy what i will get will be pretty high and if it is a diverging series whatever uh, if it is a diverging series means one series going downwards and other series is going upward so the lower the lowest digit of one series gets multiplied with the highest digit of multi series. So let's say that we have 16 multiplied by 16. That will be a pretty big number. Now if I'm multiplying 16 by 1, that will be a pretty small number. So in that way, while doing the multiplication, it's automatically considering the trend of both series. So while we were able to get the trend, now we need to normalize the value because this value the n multiplied by x y minus sigma x and sigma y it will be a numerical value it won't be from minus 1 to 1 so for nullifying or the normalizing that value i am 
dividing it by the this denominator so once i am dividing it by the denominator if you see over here if the value is pretty high over here the denominator itself will become pretty high so the maximum value what i can in get in the correlation coefficient will be 1 and the least value what i can get in this will be minus 1 so this denominator part is just normalizing the correlation coefficient and the denominator part is finding out the trend between two series so hopefully i was being able to make you understand what is happening inside the formula and how we calculating the correlation coefficient please consider subscribing the channel because we used to come up with these type of videos every single week so with that we will close today's session bye bye take care Thank you.